Greetings from Tyang News. Uh, my name is Michael Schmela. I'm the managing director of Tyang News, and I would like to welcome everybody to our webinar on heterojunction technology, uh, abbreviated HJT. Um, the next big thing in solar cell and module manufacturing? Question mark. That was the name of a report we launched earlier this year. And um, what we are doing, and we will do that with all our reports as of now, is that in addition to the report, we will also have a webinar. Um, the webinar will be always structured or is structured in a way that um, we, as Tyang News, will summarize our the findings of our report once again. And we have invited um, a relevant player um, that's active in that field. And in this um, in this particular or with this particular topic, that's um, obviously um, Maya Burger, um, who we've invited. So um, we have um, Shravan Chanduri, our head of technologies, who will give an overview and an update on HJT um, based on our report. We're very happy and welcome uh, Gunther Erfurt, the CTO of Maya Burger, um, who will um, go one step further and talk about industrial production of HJT. Um, we have this two presentations, each around 20 minutes. Um, afterwards, we will have the Q&A. The way the Q&A works is please use the control panel, um, enter the, the questions, then I can look at them, structure them, and I will um, then ask the panelists um, to answer those questions. So thank you very much um, again for joining us. Uh, Shravan, the floors is yours. OK, thank you, Michael. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone, to my presentation on uh, heterojunction technology, and, uh, the next big thing in solar cell module manufacturing. Uh, as Michael introduced, I'm Shravan Chanduri. I'm head of technology at Tang News. So uh, next slide, please. You know, uh, I would also like to take an opportunity to introduce uh, ourselves. So, uh, as you all know, uh, we are Tayang News, but uh, we also have another platform, Mishko. So, uh, Tayang News uh, is a open source uh, uh, news platform. Here, we publish uh, technology reports and uh, market surveys, which are uh, rel rel relevant to the PV manufacturing and all our in-depth technology reports are literally free to download. And uh, then Mishko is our uh, consulting arm through which uh, we help uh, companies with uh, consulting and communication strategies. And next slide. As Michael already said, like uh, uh, our uh, this uh, webinar is basically the adaptation of uh, Tayang News report on uh, heterojunction technology, which we published uh, during March of uh, this year. And uh, if you have not already downloaded, uh, please go to our website at the, in the section of uh, reports. You will find there. Put your credential and you can still download our report. Uh, you know this will be a very elaborated version of uh, of this uh, current webinar. Next slide, please. So, be it introduction are are kind of a motivation for us to do this uh, uh, study slash webinar is uh, you know PV manufacturers are are really looking into uh, uh, increasing efficiency, and uh, you know we have seen that in the last three or four years, Park has has been really becoming the 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 dominant technology in terms of uh, pursuing higher efficiency so really perk was uh, on everyone's radar but uh, i think perk is also soon expected to reach uh, its optimum limit um uh, according to our research the current average efficiencies are about uh, 22 percent so you know plus or minus two percent um, at several make, cell makers and a uh, few cell makers have already exceeded 22.2%. Uh, uh, but 
again so when we are talking to companies so a uh, lot of people are also telling that you know perk is expected to reach its uh, practical efficiency limits uh, in less than two years so in this situation uh, actually uh, if some people want to look at uh, what's the next step for the high efficiency um, uh, heterojunction technology was really uh, shining bright in the sky because uh, heterojunction uh, practically was the technology that was part of the previous four world highest efficiency records in in last five years so even the current world record efficiency of 26.63 was uh, uh, held uh, you know announced by uh, kaneka in august 17 uh, it's also based on heterojunction platform and uh, of course it's not a complete heterojunction but it's a back junction heterojunction but still heterojunction was part of this uh, this efficiency progress roadmap and uh, so the and another important factor is heterojunction is not really a lab concept and uh, uh, you know people have uh, companies like panasonic they have really uh, have the experience and several several companies research centers have been looking at the technology and uh, a lot of people have seen that there is a potential for heterojunction technology so uh, so that's the reason heterojunction key is the key uh, uh, the efficiency of heterojunction is the, is the key that has attracted a lot of attention next slide and uh, you know coming to the basics of the heterojunction um, uh, heterojunction is a, a really a fusion of a vapor based solar technology and a thin film technology and uh, typically it is based on n type uh, uh, wafers and it, it's there the, it has uh, several advantages for example the the process steps are really uh, less so seven and compared to seven uh, nine or ten with the perk and uh, uh, it's uh, it is a low temperature process all uh, deposition steps are accomplished at low temperature and the uh, the cells and the modules they have low degradation it has low thermal coefficient uh, compared to any other uh, uh, crystalline cell technologies um, but uh, uh, one, uh, you know, on the flip side of heterojunction technology, it really requires a completely different uh, processing flow. So it's it's completely different from, and it has a very little uh, uh, similarity compared to the process sequence of the traditional crystalline silicon manufacturing. Next slide. So, but uh, heterojunction is really not uh, a, a completely new technology. It's a really age-old technology. Uh, you know, the uh, the development phase was uh, it was first uh, invented by '74, but really in in uh, when Sanyo took the technology uh, and developed it, this has happened sometime sometime in 1980. And Panasonic was also, I mean, at the time it was Sanyo. Uh, Sanyo was later taken uh, taken over by Panasonic. In in the first movers phase was uh, around uh, 1997 when Panasonic took the technology into the mass production and uh, and then then several companies and research institutes have also joined the development and uh, as you can see here the industrialization phase is uh, between 2010 and 2016 where um, uh, companies research centers they have. Uh, uh, established uh, uh, pilot scale uh, uh, systems and started really evaluating the process. And uh, we think that the commercialization has started uh, since uh, 2017 and, uh, and 2018, where a uh, lot of companies uh, have uh, uh, started uh, putting more emphasis and uh, not just a lab technology, but uh, really putting a more emphasis towards the commercialization and mass production. And here, I think Mayor Burger has also played a, a, a great role here because they also started very early on the technology uh, uh, in, in 2018. Next step. 
So uh, actually, in, in summary, uh, if there is anyone to be credited for, for the development of heterojunction technology, uh, it's Panasonic. So uh, actually, the, uh, the company called its technology as HIT. Uh, it's a heterojunction with the intrinsic thin layer. Um, uh, actually, Sanyo uh, hold the uh, has the key patents uh, for the technology, which has uh, really limited the technology to grow out of uh, uh, Sanyo. But uh, in 2010, both the, San, uh, the patents were the key patents, uh, not all, but the key patents have uh, expired and also the company was taken over by Panasonic. And uh, after this patent expiry, the, uh, the interest has really increased uh, in, in companies. Of course, some of the research centers uh, have started as early as uh, you know, 2003, 2004, but uh, uh, majority have uh, really started a big activity in, in the stream of heterojunction uh, starting from 2010. Next slide, please. And uh, you know when we published our uh, report uh, in in uh, in uh, March, uh, in this slide you can see that there are uh, companies that are um, uh, have some small capacities uh, uh, at different parts of the world. So the leading one is again uh, Japan's uh, Panasonic. Panasonic has uh, around uh, one close to one gigawatt capacity. Then there are a few other companies like CIC, Kaneka, Sharp in Japan, who also have uh, small production, pilot production lines. Then um, Havel got a 250 megawatt capacity. Then in Taiwan, NSP, uh, now it's URI. And uh, then in China, um, uh, Gia Solar got uh, earlier got 100 megawatt now, and this year they kind of uh, uh, put their uh, another new 500 megawatt capacity line. Um, and there are a lot of other companies uh, that have uh, around 100 to uh, 200 uh, uh, megawatt capacity. And uh, what is not included here, actually, there are several companies. Uh, that uh, actually made a big announcement uh, announcements after we we finalized our report so that's uh, really rec which uh, announced to uh, have a capacity of 600 uh, megawatt in cooperation with uh, mayor burger then um, uh, companies like uh, akcom and uh, ico they are also planning to build uh, uh, capacities, uh, new lines with uh, uh, you know one or two lines. Even Tongwei, they got uh, right now a uh, an idea of uh, having two lines: one as a golden line with all imported equipment, and uh, one as a uh, all Chinese equipment to have the comparison. So, in summary, after Panasonic, I think the most uh, important milestone that. Uh, uh, kind of industry has seen in terms of uh, mass production activities, uh, really REC support to do it uh, at 600 megawatt. Um, GSOLAR also got a uh, got a capacity, like they, they, they were also one of the part of this, uh, but I think uh, uh, REC got uh, really a mass production uh, effort towards this. Uh, next slide. So uh, coming to the HJT processing, um, like, you know, I would like, of course, there, are, there is, the, since this is a high efficiency technology, so you have, it also needs uh, high quality uh, wafers, but I think uh, right now it's not a major topic of concern because companies like uh, Longi, they're already uh, providing very high quality wafers. So wafer quality concerns are already addressed, so that's why I'm not uh, emphasizing here. And when it comes to cell processing, it, it has a really three major steps. One is a wafer conditioning, another is a deposition, and the uh, uh, third one is a metallization. In, in wafer conditioning, it's uh, really, uh, I mean, in in traditional tech, uh, uh, crystalline silicon manufacturing, so it's only texturing. Here also it starts with texturing, but it really need the, the surface has to be clean because uh, the cracks of the heterojunction process all has uh, 
is about uh, uh, depositing the, the the thin film layer so the surface has to be super clean so uh, i think the wafer conditioning is all about uh, uh, adding a cleanliness plus the the crystalline silicon wafer uh, process of texturing and sort of image removal and texturing and deposition got uh, two important uh, parts one is uh, depositing the uh, the core layers uh, which which are uh, doped and intrinsic amorphous silicon layers on the both sides so here the wafer is sandwiched between these two doped and uh, intrinsic amorphous silicon layers which are deposited and on top of that the wafers also get a transparent conductive oxide coating um, for the lateral conduction and uh, finally uh, it is also metallization like with the traditional uh, crystalline silicon manufacturing here also there is metallization but still since the layers are temperature sensitive uh, amorphous silicon layers uh, so here some tweaking are it's it's a rather big change uh, in uh, compared to a standard metallization process where uh, the uh, fire through paste are are used. Um, okay, uh, next slide. Yeah, uh, as far as the wafer uh, conditioning, as I mentioned, so here the cleanliness is the most uh, important thing. So the the surface has to be super clean, and uh, there are of course one can uh, order a, our machines uh, from well known suppliers like uh, rena singulus uh, rct uh, uh, yac sorry there's a mistake here as uh, from japan or sc new energy and lot lot and lot more companies are are able to offer this uh, wet chemical treatment systems uh, but uh, you know according to a presentation uh, from from rena even um, the earlier i mean installed uh, uh, existing equipment can also be uh, uh, kind of uh, used to to work it for heterojunction so the major changes are uh, really oxidative cleaning that is before sada mesh removal and the oxidation etch back uh, uh, after after the uh, uh, texturing so these are the main uh, steps and uh, so in the next slide uh, uh, I will go more details into the cleaning mechanisms. Next slide. Uh, I think there are basically uh, two uh, technologies available, uh, two approaches available for for making uh, uh, the cleaning process. So one is uh, RCA cleaning, and then uh, another is a ozone-based process. R RCA uses a high temperature. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, oh hot liquids and uh, it uses hydrogen peroxide and uh, and but uh, according to um, our research uh, rca process is a very stable process and uh, so it's a, a little bit expensive but uh, uh, you know it can be uh, easily installed ozone basis process probably it requires a little bit more expertise uh, but, but it is a a little bit expensive compared to the traditional uh, you know traditional uh, cleaning process uh, next slide please so uh, actually the 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 most important process in the uh, in the hetero heterojunction manufacturing is a deposition of a, a core layer which are doped at amorphous silicon layers on on both sides um, so uh, here there are a uh, few companies that are offering the technology but uh, there are two uh, main streams of uh, uh, technology so one is a pcvd uh, which is developed which is uh, followed by most of the companies then uh, cat cvd uh, which is a, a catalytic uh, cvd process and uh, it's also known as hotwire cvd process and uh, this is uh, uh, supplied by ulvac so um Actually, if you look into this table, um, uh, I would like to put an emphasis that out of this, uh, you know, uh, all companies listed here like Mayerburger, Ideal Energy, Ulvac, Applied Materials, Archers, Indiotech, Lean Micro, GS Solar, um, most of the companies follow PCVD. So, and uh, uh, Ulvac is uh, 
their their main uh, technology is for flat panel display lcd ftp uh, display product and uh, applied materials though it is also a p based on pcbd platform it's also mainly uh, made for uh, uh, made for ftp uh, applications so uh, in if you come to the, the the companies that are active really active in this uh, field it's who are really PV specific, like Mayor Burger, Ideal Energy, Archers, and uh, Indiotech is a startup company. Um, I, I will talk about it uh, in detail later. So uh, after these three techno uh, three companies, um, uh, Mayor Burger and Ideal Energy are the are the most uh, important uh, companies here. Uh, Mayor Burger they have a uh, throughput of 2,400 wafers. Ideal Energy has uh, recently introduced a second generation reactor which can support uh, a throughput up to 3,000 wafers. And uh, we heard that Archer had some initial problems, uh, some problems with their initial uh, clients. Um, Indiotech is really working on a very innovative technology. So most, all, I mean, except for Indiotech, all the other uh, technologies, uh, all other companies, irrespective of their technologies, they are able, they can only deposit only on single side of the wafer. That means typically you need two, two tools or a, a cluster which can process uh, front end rare. But Indiotech is working on a very innovative platform where you can deposit uh, uh, both the active, uh, the core layers on both sides in one tool. So there is a very big cost reduction potential, uh, but still the technology is uh, uh, is evaluation is entering into the evaluation phase uh, uh, as we came to know that one of the chinese companies is going to evaluate the technology uh, uh, by uh, end of this year uh, uh, in in production environment and uh, here gs solar is kind of uh, 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 having a very different business model they are they have initially have 100 megawatt uh, line and then now they extend it to 500 they added one more uh, uh, an additional 500 and in addition to being a module or core uh, manufacturer they also want to cooperate with the selected partners so the systems are the uh, i mean selected partners cooperation also includes the equipment uh, supply but you know they say that uh, the uh, systems are not available for open market uh, but they also have a uh, technology where uh, their systems can support uh, uh, 3000 wafers per hour uh, uh, what is completely new in this segment is uh, PEALD this is nothing but uh, plasma enhanced uh, ALD technology uh, this is offered by lead micro and uh, so far uh, um, none of the industry experts uh, uh, know how this technology is going to work so probably in our next report we will be able to provide more details uh, next slide please So the next and the uh, uh, the second most important step in heterojunction is uh, uh, the TCO deposition, uh, transparent conductive uh, oxides. There are right now there are two widely known methods. Uh, um, one is uh, uh, PVD sputtering. Uh, it's a well-known technology. It's also very well used in thin film PV and a lot of companies which are active in in those areas uh, in earlier era of thin film are also now providing solutions for this. So it's a uh, uh, really uh, a very mature technology. Um, RPD is a, uh, is a relatively proprietary process. So that means uh, it has, uh, it, it, uh, you, it, it, so the, the core of the technology is a, is a plasma gun design and the Japanese company Sumitomo holds the patents on, on the technology. And uh, still uh, two companies are able to license uh, uh, the technology uh, from Sumitomo, uh, one is uh, 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 Archers, and uh, recently China SC has also licensed the technology, and they, were, they have the, uh, built a reactor around it. So uh, 
compared to RPD and CVD, uh, RPD has a slightly higher potential. Uh, so in the initial days, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the efficiency gain with RPD was uh, somewhere around 0.5% uh, absolute, but the, the development in PVC, sorry, PVD has also taken a, a real big leaps in terms of optimizing because there are several comp uh, custom companies that are active in the field. As a result, uh, the, the efficiency delta, the benefit of uh, uh, signing into RPD is getting diminished. But on the other hand, you know, companies like SC, uh, Shen, uh, uh, SC New Energy from China, if uh, they can, uh, if they are stepping into that, so there could be also probably some more uh, good news for RPD. So this is right now, uh, it's, a, it's not yet known, but our PVD definitely has one big advantage that uh, uh, it can also uh, uh, you know benefit from the developments in the other industry for example we heard that uh, uh, low emissivity glass uh, coating machines which also use pvd they can also be tweaked for solar related applications where they have even they can already do 3.5 meter uh, uh, wide substrates so in this way so these technologies right now since Heterojunction is not completely, uh, uh, you know, mature. So both the technologies have their pros and cons, and probably it will take some more time to see uh, which technology gets a higher benefit. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, yeah, as far as the uh, uh, systems available in the market, uh, you know, Mayer Burger, uh, Singulus, Fonadeni uh, are really well-known PVD suppliers. Uh, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, GSOLA are not only on PCVD, they're also offering a PVD. And uh, GSOLA is actually uh, uh, their, their latest uh, plant. Uh, it's based on plating, so they tweak their machine uh, can also do both uh, TCO and the uh, C stack and the uh, copper stack and the rare side metallization patterns. Uh, and uh, RC and uh, Archers and SC New Energy are offering tools based on uh, RPD. Um, as I already discussed, so the efficiency is a little bit high with uh, uh, RPD, but uh, PVD can uh, uh, benefit from its uh, larger number of followers and uh, and maturity. Next slide. So uh, metallization is actually uh, one of the very critical uh, 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 step of uh, heterojunction. So since the layers are uh, amorphous, uh, which are temperature sensitive, so uh, here completely uh, different process has to be adopted. So uh, it has to be uh, somewhat different from what is followed in, in crystalline silicon. Uh, basically, screen printing, which was already established in, in, uh, in for the regular stream, it can also be tweaked to work for uh, uh, heterojunction. And uh, uh, plating, you know, the, the technology has been there from several years, but uh, plating seems to have some advantages uh, with heterojunction. So some of the companies are also trying to promote uh, plating uh, for heterojunction. So the main change for the screen printing is uh, uh, they have to, uh, uh, one has to use uh, uh, low temperature cured paste. Um, and uh, initially these pastes were not well available and uh, the paste consumptions were really very high and uh, because uh, the resistivity is high so you have to put more paste to get the conductivity and then but then they, in in last uh, one year or you know 18 months there has been a very significant progress in the development of the paste i think uh, uh, paste supplier like herios uh, they they are really spearheading this development uh, there were times when these pastes are polymer based paste and once the jar is opened it has to be consumed at a time otherwise uh, and the storing uh, otherwise it gets solid and it cannot be used and then uh, it has to be stored at uh, uh, really at a low temperature so special storing conditions were required but um, uh, Herios has started uh, uh, offering paste that can 
um, you know, uh, not only can can reduce the paste consumption very, very significantly, but it, it, it also brought in the operational uh, ease. Um, but now there are several companies which are really able to offer that and uh, plating you know the due to uh, this it, it, due to its uh, process it, it is highly compatible with uh, heterojunction um and uh, now se new energy and miko are, are also offering tools for uh, the plating as i mentioned earlier gs solar is uh, actually implementing the process in commercial production but uh, you know when we talk to a lot of companies in the market so uh, many of them are not really in favor of plating except for the real big followers and here in this slide you can see that uh, you know th there has been uh, a, a, a very dr uh, drastic reduction uh, in the pace so uh, this slide could be confusing uh, here because i have also put some uh, parameters of the interconnection before because uh, the uh, one of the most important uh, aspect of the metallization in heterojunction is it's often linked to the the method employed uh, in in interconnection but uh, anyway if you can see that uh, heterojunction if you take uh, a, a typical six pass bar layout uh, it has a very high uh, paste consumption for example uh, 335 milligrams so of course so this is a kind of a old data the new figures are attracting but still so this is to show you uh, how it would look look like uh, but still there is a, a considerable difference between the the traditional cell processing and uh, uh, heterojunction processing in terms of paste consumption and most of the heterojunction technologies everyone is relying on bifacial so you have to put paste on the both sides so this is also uh, increases the paste consumption compared to perk uh, which uh, kind of uses aluminum on the rear side even if it is bifacial so that's why paste consumption um, is kind of one of the big uh, uh, hot topic in in heterojunction also uh, in metallization um, Shravan, maybe you have three more minutes actually okay. please um, one sentence to each of the next slides and then maybe the con two conclusion slides because otherwise uh, we Okay. <laughs> Won't make oh, it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, for interconnections, um, there are really three three options. Like soldering uh, is a traditional option, but uh, one can also use electrical conductive adhesives uh, that can replace the the soldering method. There are uh, stringer companies which can offer uh, solutions to apply uh, ECA but uh, uh, very advanced in, uh, interconnection technology is Mayer Burgers SWCT as you can see in the previous slide um, you know it, it can bring down the metallization uh, 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 metallization paste consumption uh, to very low levels uh, the reduction is up to 70 to 80 uh, percent um, this is uh, this is it uses uh, uh, thin copper wires and it's a completely revolutionary technology and it's been also used by many heterojunction players already in the market um, next slide Yeah, so uh, here you can really see that uh, the, the the cost for uh, uh, for heterojunction interconnection and metallization put together. If you have a real good uh, um, interconnection process, uh, the pay the the cost can be uh, reduced to significantly. So, for example, here you can see that the the print and the SWCT process can really bring down the cost to 0 0.03 cents compared to uh, 0 0.05 cents with the soldering based uh, approach. Uh, so here you have to play a mix and match. Uh, next slide. So <clears throat> ultimately, uh, what really matters is uh, uh, efficiency. And uh, um, so 
according to our recent uh, uh, re-evaluation of these uh, players, what we found is a lot of companies are at 23% uh, uh, already in mass production and their champion cells are also exceeding, uh, uh, are also close to 24%. So, and a lot of companies have a roadmap to reach mass production efficiency of 24% in, in one to one and a half year. Um, uh, and next slide, please. At the module level, uh, right now, uh, the champion module is from REC, which has uh, 380 watts uh, using uh, half cell technology. And uh, they have, uh, uh, and then there are, of course, Mayor Burger is also leader in, in, in module, but coming to the, uh, the regular stream, uh, GS Solar got uh, 410 watts module in 72 cells. And there are other companies which are really closing, uh, uh, which are coming to close to 410 and, and going beyond uh, by adding new module technologies because heterojunction can also support a lot of other innovative module technologies like bifacial. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is a, a slide that can uh, really tell you about uh, the uh, the levelized cost of ownership is uh, really great with uh, heterojunction. So not only the high efficiency, uh, but heterojunction also got low degradation and also high performance uh, in, in low light uh, conditions and also low temperature coefficient. So uh, this is a data provided uh, to us by Bayer So it has a... Um, 3.88 cents dollar cents per kilowatt hour you know compared to the 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 perk like which has a 4.61 dollars uh, 4.61 cents um, <clears throat> next slide please um, but uh, like any technology, heterojunction also has uh, limitations. Uh, so uh, the most of the uh, the, the important uh, bottleneck for heterojunction is uh, really the park, which is developing very fast and uh, turning it to a big standing block for any new technology, not just for heterojunction. And uh, uh, PERC now became a benchmark for any new technology. So because the PERC has really evolved lowest in terms of the cost uh, after 531 directive last year. So this is becoming a very big problem for any new technology. So CAPEX is also uh, one of the bottleneck for heterojunction, um, which is uh, around two to three times compared to PERC, especially after 531 because the the capex for the uh, perk has really gone down and uh, the throughput as uh, as you could you you have seen in the uh, in the re reactors and and uh, pcvd and rpd uh, cbd slides so the throughputs are around 2000 2400 so most of them they have the same throughputs that means but compared to perk this is low that's what industry thinks so the throughputs have to come uh, really to a next level and I think uh, uh, a lot of companies are working in this direction in this direction and manufacturing costs also have to come down especially uh, with the metallization um, yeah next slide please so here I come to my really, conclusion. Really rush. Really okay. rush so hetero uh, thing uh, is uh, as I said so it's really attracting a lot of attention. So the ch supply chain is improving with greater number of equipment makers uh, entering into the field. Uh, so uh, processing wise, it's, it's all best, well established, only the metallization has to be improved. Uh, and then uh, there is a mix and match equation at uh, interconnection and, and metallization. Um, and some technologies like SWCT uh, can already reduce the metallization uh, uh, cost to significantly and uh, current average cell production uh, average cell efficiencies are 23 percent and the champion cells are already at 24 percent so and uh, 72 cell modules already reached 410 watts uh, so we really think that uh, hjt has all the attributes for becoming the next big thing in solar cell modules thank you very much and i'm sorry it took some time more <laughs> Thanks, Ravan, for uh, almost putting uh, the entire report into this uh, presentation. So let's see what you've left now for um, Gunther, who will now bring in also uh, the real world experience. Um, please, Gunther, the floor is yours. 
Thank, thank you, Michael. I, I hope I can uh, well un uh, understood by, by all the uh, participants in that webinar. Thanks for the invitation. So I'm now trying to catch up uh, as soon as I can. So please go to slide number three directly and flip number two. So next one. Yes, thank you. Um, so this, Let's no, 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 one, one back, please. Yes, this one. So this is um, taken directly from the uh, CPIA technology roadmap, uh, the Chinese uh, Photovoltaic Industry Association. Um, uh, I, I, I'm of the strong belief that uh, given the fact that uh, China is um, dominating uh, PV manufacturing, that this uh, is showing um, the the current reality in the industry. And what we can see here is what was already mentioned by Shravan, uh, that uh, the um, leftover perk potential is is less than it was um, initially anticipated uh, when uh, when researchers assumed that um, perk can reach levels of uh, 24%. In the laboratory, yes. In the real world, it is very unlikely to reach there. Uh, so this is why the industry uh, for, let's say, the established uh, technologies is looking now for uh, a next uh, technology upgrade that can make use of existing capacities. And that is um, there's a, at least a high likelihood that this uh, could be N Topcon as an upgrade. But still, what is very obvious here in that, in that uh, in these numbers provided by the CPIA is that heterojunction is the... The, the undisputed champion with regards to um, cell efficiency, efficiencies that are anticipated on the on the left side and on the right side. I took the liberty to translate the CPIA cell um, data into uh, an assumed uh, module power of an M4 format uh, using for all technologies a 1.5 percent cell to module loss, and this is what you get: um, a very very um, high power product for uh, heterojunction, unlike PERC and TOPCON, making it the highest power uh, module um, available, at least, at least in large scale. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, a data source uh, uh, of uh, PV infolink, infolink um, uh, um, suggested and um, assumed um, a strong growth of N-type technologies in the coming years. And why is that? Exactly, again, for the same reason. Um, cost reduction in photovoltaics uh, is, uh, uh, on the one hand, managed by uh, managing the supply chain, um, uh, procurement elements and, and, and such. And on the other hand, of course, uh, manufacturing step costs can be can be reduced or diluted by increasing the solar cell efficiency slash the module power and this is a very big lever, and this is why um, all N-type technologies are so much of interest, and specifically heterojunction with the great potential that I have shown a slide before. Next slide, please. Next. So the benefits of the technology, I think this was already nicely summarized by Shravan, highest efficiencies, uh, reduced pro production steps, and of course also labor costs. If you only run uh, for uh, main production tools, then you need accordingly also less personnel for operations and of course also for the maintenance parts. And this is uh, a, a big advantage when you think about a park line with the current process steps and uh, uh, potentially a few more process steps added when it comes to TopCon, then um, the, the choice for technology um, uh, is probably simpler when you have the choice for technology that only needs um, a few process steps like heterojunction. Uh, we can we can operate um, uh, the technology at uh, best passivation um, qualities uh, and so take making the best use of the silicon wafer with very very high lifetimes. Uh, this is um, impossible with any other technology that I've shown on the previous slides, uh, uh, regardless of TopCon or PROC. So heterojunction has um, um, a, a very, very good performance in that regard. Um, it was mentioned also by Shravan that uh, Maya Borg was focusing um, on heterojunction and smart wire combination for the reason of uh, using less um, silver. 
of the, the lowest silver consumption in, in the market with this technology, but also it brings a very good uh, performance uh, of the module for, for many, many technical reasons that are inherent with the smart wire technology. It provides the lowest levelized cost of electricity, and it is true that for the time being, uh, uh, the PV industry is uh, very focused on production step cost and on, uh, on the dollar per watt peak metric, but more and more um, LCOE driven projects um, 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 are being introduced by um, uh, companies looking into PPA uh, projects and focusing on the lowest, um, uh, lowest potentially lowest technology for um, the cost of electricity of photovoltaics. Um, Technology, it was mentioned, highest intrinsic cell efficiency in the market, uh, temperature coefficient goes directly into energy yield and so levelized cost of energy. And uh, we get a, a higher yield out of um, the, the module because of uh, the bifaci bifaciality and, of course, the uh, temperature coefficient. coefficient. Next, next slide, please. Um, a big... A big milestone uh, for for Meyerberger, and uh, I, I think uh, it is also fair to say um, for for the industry, for the PV industry, uh, was um, the um, uh, 600 megawatt order of REC that was uh, placed last year in December. Um, the project is in progress. Um, uh, REC has released and launched the product. Um, at Intersolar in Munich in May, and if you if you go to the next slide, please, then we have um, the data sheet, the official data sheet of RSC um, as it was uh, presented during Intersolar. Uh, we can we can proudly say both RSC and Meyerberger that uh, we reach module efficiencies with this combination of heterojunction and smart wire which are outperforming anything that we know from PERC by far. So best in class comparable technology, uh, M4 half sales uh, reaches uh, uh, below 20% in module efficiency here, the best module, and here the best module is at 21.7%. This is getting very close to the leading IBC suppliers such as uh, LG and SunPower, um, uh, their best modules reach uh, slightly above 22%, and I'm pretty convinced that uh, this technology, heterojunction and smart wire, will also reach levels of beyond 22% soon. Next slide, please. Uh, so this this slide was already presented by uh, by Shravan. I think uh, this is from also taken from the Tying News report that was nicely put together by Tying News, so we can skip this. Um, here we see data that were collected by Meyerberger over, uh, um, um, uh, it shows here uh, a year, it was uh, taken from March 2017 through April um, 18, so a year, uh, showing a full year, a full solar year uh, in uh, the United Arab Emirates, a very hot climate, very sunny climate also showing the comparison of a standard uh, module reference, uh, which was um, 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 the standard aluminum BUSF old technology. Then the red bar that we see here is uh, a PERT module, uh, bifacial, and the blue and the gray is Meyerberger's smart wire heterojunction technology. And what we, what we see here is um, a, a very, very high um, energy yield compared to any other technology throughout the whole year, with um, uh, energy yields uh, of uh, um, up to 25% more than the reference. And such measurements we took also in other regions um, in the world, um, in different climate zones, and it showed very, very consistent data. So this is why we have the proof and the, and the data and um, the confirmation that Anything that, that yields to these higher uh, energy yields, uh, let it be the uh, co temperature coefficient and the bifaciality is, is contributing to this. So next slide, please.
So again, here the summary, up to 25% more energy yield, and this will become very, very important when the LCOE metric will, let's put it this way, take over um, or become more important as it is today with regards to the selection of a technology. Next slide. Of course, uh, the question is always how reliable is the product? Uh, it is, uh, of course, uh, for every new PV technology, um, uh, an important milestone to reach uh, a bankable product. And the bank bankability is only provided uh, if the, uh, the product uh, keeps the promise, the quality promise. And um, uh, this is this is on the one hand shown here. Uh, we, we took a lot of uh, measurements and data and can clearly say that the heterojunction in a smart wire combination uh, is uh, not showing any PID. It is not showing any LID. Uh, it has nearly no um, power loss in damp heat and also nearly no power loss in thermal cycling. And um, um, again, coming back to the RSC project, RSC is recognized as uh, a very, very high quality brand. And this uh, boosts, of course, the whole uh, heterojunction case uh, in, the, in the PV industry if a player like RSC makes a decision towards uh, introducing such a technology. Next slide, please. Um, a few a few more elements that are of, of importance. Uh, heterojunction is uh, a, 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 a silicon a crystalline silicon technology that uh, potentially allows the use of ultra thin wafers uh, because of the low temperature characteristics of the processing. This only works in conjunction with the use of smart wire connection technology, which is uh, a very gentle way of uh, connecting the cells so there's no mechanical stress there are uh, almost no micro cracks there's no bowing of the cell and this allows uh, the use of ultra thin wafers which of course contributes heavily to the reduction of the step cost um, uh, of the manufacturing of of uh, the solar module next slide so the technical data, I think this we've seen. Uh, I think we can we can skip this. It was already in Schraubern's presentation. Uh, maybe the only element here is important that uh, the, the heterojunction cell is is per se a bifacial cell, and the bifaciality um, is uh, theoretically at 100%. It is a little bit lower because of the different metallization scheme on the backside. Uh, Meyer Burger has a TUV confirmed bifaciality for the module of 93%, which is um, uh, almost 20% more in bifacial, bifaciality than what is being achieved today with uh, PARC products. And uh, this is, uh, as I said, contributing to the higher energy yields. So next slide. So this, this one shows how, um, in general at least, from the schematic, simple uh, heterojunction um, uh, production sequence is. Uh, there, there is a, a wafer inspection uh, of wafers coming from a wafer inspection could be a connection directly to a wafer line. Uh, wafers are being fed into the saw damage and texturing line. Then we do the deposition of the intrinsic and the doped layers in um, a PCBD tool. The Meyerborger Helia tool is shown here. Next step is uh, both sides front and back deposition of the uh, transparent conductive oxide in a PVD process. Um, and then the cell is being printed on the front and on the back side is run through a so-called curing oven. And then the cell process is finished by a testing and sorting. And this setup here is without any future upgrades, allowing the high efficiencies uh, as they were presented by, by Schraban. And um, this is another very important feature of heterojunction technology, unlike PERC, where for every incremental step, uh, new upgrades uh, are potentially be needed. It is different for heterojunction. Next slide. So this one only shows um, the Meyer Burger services, which uh, which uh, is is uh, it's, it's it's threefold. There there could be solutions for expansion of existing lines, of course. There are solutions for only supplying core equipments, and there is uh, the potential uh, to also go into um, a full line scope 
So this is just uh, giving a, a very broad overview about my broker services. Next slide, please. The, the tool itself, the, the Hedro Junction CVD tool, is a, is a patented technology. It uh, provides the shortest cycle time in the industry with uh, uh, around 80 seconds tack time. Uh, it is a box in the box plasma concept, so it um, it is a very uh, um, a contained technology in the sense of cleanliness of the of the process. And uh, what is important for our technology, we do not cross contaminate between the deposition of the layers. And as I said, also we can handle ultra thin wafers, and we have a very specific handling automation system that is not leaving any handling marks on the wafers. So this is a very critical process that's also integrated in the CVD. Next one, please. So the Helia PVD, uh, again, patented technology, 3,000 wafers uh, throughput, also capable of running ultra-thin wafers. And uh, super important here is uh, that Maya Borger is capable of doing a damage-free deposition, unlike our competition. So we are not damaging the um, uh, previously deposited uh, sensitive intrinsic uh, heterojunction layers by uh, uh, adding the transparent conductive oxide. So this is a very important specific of our technology. Next slide, please. Um, so smart wire, smart wire technology at a glance, uh, only on one slide, uh, we get highest powers in the module, so uh, higher than potentially possible with uh, multi bus bar and um, bus bar. As Shravan mentioned, the, the most important feature of the technology is that we can cut the use of silver Silver, just uh, to make this remark, is the second most important uh, material in the uh, supply chain of a solar module. So it has to be reduced in cost. So we can cut 80% of this uh, by using this technology. We we have less shadowing, so we get way more energy um, out of the out of the uh, modules. It is uh, capable for thin wafers and bifacial, and is uh, the most effective, cost-effective method of connecting heterojunction cells. So I think. Um, uh, smart wire is uh, really important to make um, heterojunction successful. Next slide, please. Uh, a few words about uh, Bayern Burger services. So we do a 360 degree uh, service, uh, provide uh, the installation, the training, the consumable uh, informations and parts. Uh, if, if, if necessary, we do the overhaul. Uh, upgrades, process support, um, on-site repair. This is all coming from one hand in order to reduce the risk for our customers uh, and make the whole uh, introduction of such a new technology um, less risky for for uh, the the customers of Federal Junction. Next slide. This this is the end. Thank you a lot. Okay, um, thanks, Gunter. Um, so we're in time. So let's have uh, maybe a handful of um, of questions for our Q and A. So we already see attendance a little bit dropping. So next meeting starts soon. But um, I think there are some interesting um, questions. Um, so what about? Um, I, I like this one here. So with uh, there was one. With all the advantages of heterojunction uh, technology, somebody says he, he doesn't really understand why there seems to be also now um, quite quite a push for for Topcon in China. So um, um, why why not skip Topcon altogether instead and then uh, directly go towards HJT with its higher efficiency potential? So any one of you. Um, uh, okay, so I, I think to my understanding, Topcon and heterojunction are not uh, mutually exclusive, so they have to go in parallel because Topcon has is is very considered because you can easily upgrade, not easily, but you there is a possibility of upgrading the existing cell uh, <clears throat> manufacturing line. So I mean, if you go to heterojunction, you cannot build this gigawatt or uh, this multi gigawatt factories overnight so that means you need two technologies one is kind of a next generation and still you also need for the for the current state of the art in order to compete in efficiency market so tapcon is an upgrade to perk heterojunction is is 
uh, you know, kind of saving your future. Maybe, Gunter, you want to add anything? You, you, you put it very nicely. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think there are business cases for both. Um, existing lines may, may require uh, uh, upgrades in order to extend the, the technology lifetime. Uh, for, for added capacities, uh, with, given the fact that uh, the top consequence will be very, very complex, um, uh, heterojunction uh, is is very likely to be the choice. So there is the upgrade market, and there is um, the, the greenfield market, or for new projects. And I think those need to be differentiated. Okay, I think there um, is 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 a couple of questions regarding um, costs, also capital costs, um, Topcon versus. Perk versus Hatro Junction. Don't know if you can or want to comment on this. Maybe from a new first, um, what you found out in your research then. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, uh, the the capex for uh, Hatro Junction, what I heard is around uh, two to three times of of uh, perk uh, and then uh, the the operational so the manufacturing costs are around 1.8 to 2 times of the perk so for the passivated contacts um, it's not really completely known so it's not really we cannot compare with perk because it's more or less considered as an upgrade market but uh, the, you know even it is not really clear what the technology is going to be uh, for the topcon so the capital costs for topcon are, are difficult yeah but if you if one want to say that one could take a uh, uh, a multiplication factor of 1.4 1.4 1.3 1.4 it it depends for topcon from uh, compared to perk so perk is right now the new benchmark Yeah, so uh, my, my comments would be that uh, I think uh, production production step costs for, for TopCon are still unclear. Uh, this is because the technology is not yet fully mature and is not uh, manufactured in, in gigawatt scale. So it's probably too early to, to, to give a consolidated good view on that. Um, the CapEx, the CapEx situation, uh, of course, comparing PERC with um, Federal junction is a comparison of apples with peers, so it's not not um, a, 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 an ideal comparison because, um, as we've discussed, Perk is reaching uh, the limitations of the technologies of the technology soon in terms of efficiency uh, potential, uh, and hetero junction has uh, has still uh, the headroom to improve. Um, so this is why the comparison cannot be made between Perk. And hetero junction so easily. Um, if um, the capex for a topcon solution uh, is being taken into account, that comes on top of a perk line, so it increases the the uh, the capex uh, for for this solution, and is getting then closer to uh, the hetero junction capex and the capex at the same time for hetero junction uh, um, because of the uh, introduction of the technology now in the market will, like any other uh, cost in the PV industry and in other industry, uh, of course, also go down. Um, as of as of today, there is there is there is there is this difference uh, for sure. Um, but uh, when you look at the, the production step cost, um, the big difference between uh, different heterojunction uh, manufacturers is uh, uh, beside the, the achieved uh, efficiency is definitely the metallization scheme and the module technology, and that makes the difference. So I, I without without providing details, but I do not agree to a 1.5 or 1.8 uh, factor of uh, perk versus heterojunction in manufacturing step cost. I'm I, I'm of the strong belief that a heterojunction uh, won't be uh, won't be um, much higher than uh, PERC manufacturing step cost, but the, the energy yield, the levelized cost of energy, and the module power are much, much better than, than PERC.
Maybe one final question also regarding degradation. Um, there were also recently reports and, and work about um, deg degradation. Um, are, are we seeing anything in, um, in heterojunction? And uh, so. So I, I can, I can, I can again uh, repeat uh, what I what I showed uh, briefly in my slides. Um, so we've done extensive testing of the of the technology heterojunction and smart wire. Uh, so we 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 don't see LID, we don't see PID. That's a big advantage um, comparing heterojunction with PERC. Um, and the um, the IEC uh, uh, test metric um, with regards to damp heat and um, temperature cycling and all of this. That I also showed uh, with only very, very little um, uh, degradations, uh, definitely in the in the in the specification. So my answer is that there are no 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 known um, effects uh, that that will um, uh, that will make uh, the heterojunction product degrading. degrading. Okay, um, thank you very much. We're five minutes late. I don't want to keep you from your other work away longer. So thank you to Gunther. Thank you to Shravan uh, for their presentations. Um, the presentations, actually the recording, uh, will be online um, in, in three days. Uh, so we will have a, a YouTube um, video on this. And um, as I mentioned already in the beginning, we will do now from all our reports, um, regular um, webinars like that. So the next one will be um, on backsheets and encapsulation, um, a report we also very published recently. Um, we will come up soon with the date. So thanks again for joining and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.